Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to uh, Dumb SEO Questions, episode 399. Uh, each week uh, we meet here to uh, uh, review the questions uh, and answers given on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight, we have Masataki Wasa and Tim Kappa. Um, Tim is based in Corby, uh, about 100 miles north of uh, uh, London. He's a uh, Google product expert on the uh, Google My Business community. Uh, you can find Tim at onlineownership.com. And Masataki Wasa is webmaster of wasaweb.net. He's based in Wimbledon uh, in London. Um, Masataki uh, is also a Google product expert uh, in the AdSense community. Okay, we have um, um, uh, 16 questions uh, uh, tonight. Um, First one is titled, What are White Hat SEO uh, Techniques? And um, it was a question asked by Johnny Storsev. Well, uh, it's quite broad, really, but White Hat is, I suppose, would be classed as something that Google or search engines um would not consider to be uh, uh manipulative in in uh, any way yeah yes i i, I think that, that, that that's that's all we need there all right let's um move on to uh, the next and um, that uh, one is um, the AMP URL is not serving AMP anymore. Um, I'm wondering if there is a need to remove it or just leave it as is. The plugin uh, is gone. Look, I mean, AMP looks like one of those projects at Google that fell out of favour and uh, had um, funds withdrawn from it and um, it's just slowly well, dying. I don't know. If this plugin's gone and the URL doesn't exist anymore, then that page doesn't exist. So um, nothing. It's gone. It's gone. Just leave it. Mm hmm. Yeah, totally. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, because the plugin obviously generated it. I'm assuming. I don't know what you know. So, I'm, if the plugin generated it, and these aren't permanent sort of pages, um, yeah, no, that's it. Just leave it. <laughs> okay. Uh, number three on our run list, um, Jordan Allen. Uh, it's titled, I got a backlink. Will this give my site any link juice? Um, Jordan went on to say, I, I got a backlink to my site in construction uh, page. Uh, that is relevant to the niche trade that I am in. It's an exclusive directory I, I'm on for verified vinyl siding installers. Uh, will this give my site uh, any lead juice? If so, how long until I see the results from a solid backlink? Unfortunately, Jordan, I hate to burst your bubble, mate, but um, <laughs> you're not going to see any results from a single backlink. Um, however, having said that, if you are in a particular area and you're like, you know, you haven't, you know got that much kind of competition your your other competition your other siding installers in your area uh just basically plodding along and you're the only one that's got this you may depending on how your site's built or 
optimized, you may see a bump up in a position. Um, I'm guessing this is a countrywide directory. It's probably not actually in your actual area. If it was in your area, it would be even better because local local links do have, you know, niche local uh, is obviously a lot better. Um, but like, yeah, you're not gonna, you know, you're not gonna see anything from this, from this single directory link. Um, so yeah, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, fair enough, Tim. Okay, let's look at number number four on our run list is from Kunjal Chowan, and it, it's a question. It's titled: uh, Do Wikimedia backlinks make any difference? Um, and Kunjal goes on to say, or does it in any way influence the Google Knowledge Graph? Um. Um. So I'm not, not. Yeah, it certainly does because Google uses Wiki. Uh, it depends on what. Yeah, you know. Um, it's certainly it's certainly used. I don't know, like, in what way, shape, or form it'll, it will uh, directly influence it, but. You know, if your brand is being referenced with images, um, etc., um, then sure, it's going to be another uh, level of understanding for Google and the knowledge graph to build that out for your for for the brand or the business. So yeah, it's certainly going to help. Whether you say like it's going to make any difference uh, in that sense, uh, I'm not entirely sure. Like whether you're going to see something overnight, definitely, probably not. Um, you know, uh, search engines build that out with a lot of different sources and data, um, and it may take a little while before you see anything. But, but for sure, you know, if it's there, it it it's, it can only benefit. Okay. All right. Um, let's go ahead and see that Shay, Sh Shayo Chi Lo uh, has asked a question titled, How can a, how can a brand beat how can a brand beat a retailer on broad generic terms? Um, Shay Chi Lo went on to say, uh, I, recently I realised that retailers almost always rank better on generic, broad, non-branded terms over the branded websites. Um, when it comes to searches intent, it kind of makes sense since uh, when users are searching for non-branded um, I'm sorry, non-branded non uh, terms, they want to compare as many options as possible. So the landing page of retailers uh, will almost uh, be a better landing page um, for this kind of content compared to brand. So my questions are, one, do you agree with my theory? Two, uh, if so or not, uh, how can brands beat retailers on broad generic terms? Uh, and could you let me know your thoughts or experience? Thanks. So, I'm I'm I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to get this. You reckon if I search a brand, a branded T-shirt, um, it's always going to show me a local supplier. So, um, what what? I mean, I don't know any brands. I don't wear brands. I think it's bullshit. Um, uh, 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 um, and what? What's a black? What's a brand of a t-shirt? Look, uh, what? What's it? Uh, look, cock. Yeah. Ah, so there we go. Look, cock. Uh, sportive. Uh, okay, there we go. Look, cock. Sportive shoes. 
Um, okay, so I've got the brand showing up first, second, third, and then I've got fourth, fifth. I'm like, like literally, they've got every single freaking thing. Yeah, and then at the end, there's Amazon and eBay. Okay, so that didn't work. Ah, um, but it's broad, non-branded terms. Um, like, yeah, but you're still using a brand. I mean, like, yeah. if you're searching just T-shirt, you're going to get retailers, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, but like. Well, I don't understand how the brand is not appearing for that. Even if it's broad, the minute you're using that brand, that brand should be appearing on that page. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the question, the first line is, how can brand beat retailers on broad generic terms? So that would be non-brand terms. Oh, so how can a, 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 it's like, how can a brand just appear for the word <laughs> Uh, rough, ruffled yeah. edged t-shirt yeah well then they need to work on their descriptions yeah but even if they were to do so the chances are that um the argument goes uh, the chances are that retailers will pop up because people want to compare yeah, different for sure. for, yeah and for local yeah definitely um i'm also guessing <laughs> you know because depending on what you're searching for you're also going to get showed sh local shops in a local pack some of the time, which a brand probably won't be able to compete in unless, unless you actually create the brand, then create a, a page of all and kind of like a mini directory of where every single shop in every location that you can purchase or who stocks that brand. Yeah, I think I think the issue I have with this line of question um, by the poster is that you know it is treating um, website as some you know on its own as it were not as part of the branding exercise or a marketing exercise. In a sense that if you are a brand, what you're interested in is making sure that people buy your stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Not necessarily buy their stuff on their own site. It can be from other places, from other suppliers. That's fine because what you're looking for is sales, essentially revenue. So I'm not so sure whether that sort of thinking really is helpful thinking, oh, you know, I'm a brand. Um, I want to get on sort of non-brand generic terms. I'm not so sure that really is helpful. But if you start to think about how can we build a brand so that when people go to a retailer's site, they might be interested in what we offer. And then perhaps they come to our site to find out more about our product range. Things like that. I think sort of treating website on its own and thinking, yeah, we have to rank for all of these things, I think yeah. isn't necessarily helpful. Totally, because, you know, a brand is also trying to build a brand. If you're a no-name brand, you just like a cheap-ass pack of T-shirts, you know, manufactured in Pakistan for five, for, 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 for like six quid nobody's essentially searching for uh, they be using things like cheap and you know it's maybe also not helpful if your brand is associated with some of these okay so do, do, do you guys, um, will this cover this question? I'm going to take that as a yes. Let's move on to the next. Himant Kumar um, asked a question titled, I want to rank all uh, product pages uh, in Google um, with the same content. 
Iman said, uh, hello folks, I'm working on a site, uh, not uh, an e-commerce site, um, which has detailed um, in information about various products. For every product, there are uh, three to four other alternative products available in the market. So for, for pages of alternative products, there will be um, the exact same content. ABC, PAQ and XYZ are three product names which are also the primary SEO keywords um, and um, um, will have uh, the exact same content uh, with just a change in the product name. I want to rank all of these product pages uh, in Google with the same content. Uh, all of the product pages have the same importance and have different ranking keywords with product name. So my question is, do I continue using the uh, same content for different product pages or have to do something else to not hurt my SEO? I have already made uh, experiments using the same uh, uh, co content on two different product pages and both are ranking in Google search results when I'm searching uh, with their product name. I don't find a canonical tag helpful here because there is no root or one primary page. I want to rank all the product pages uh, on their respective uh, search term. My competitors are also using this exact same uh, content um, uh, for uh, different product pages. So uh, what um, should I do? Please guide me. <clears throat> so, <laughs> I mean, the thing here is, you, you like in your in, in 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 your whole thing there, you've already tried to convince yourself that I've already made tests and this works. Well, then carry on, mate. But the thing is, you're searching for the actual name of the product, right? Of course, that product's going to appear unless there are another, you know, 50, 60, 70 sites with the exact same product name, right? Um, so it's going to appear regardless of it's, you know, sort of using the same content on that product name on, on the, the, the next product name, right? P people aren't necessarily going to be searching your, your actual product. And this is where the thing comes in. People are going to be searching for different descriptions different variations. If people know what a product is called, um, then they would just search it and, uh, you know, then they would have a choice of five that are selling the same product and then they'd probably, you know, um, do a comparison of, uh, you know, price, delivery, um, who's closer, et cetera, et cetera, or whatever the case may be. So essentially, you know, you're going <laughs> to... You're probably going to be, you know, like not benefiting yourself anyway in that sense. Um, but it's still going to work if someone searches for the exact product name. It will still display it. So chucking the same content on two different things with the actual, you know, pro with different product name, it's still going to display. It, it. It's a question of how competitive is the market for that product name. Um, and if it's not competitive, then fine. You know, if you're going to rank for that product name uh, somewhere, you know, ideally position one to five, um, then then fine. It's not going to make a difference. If it's a highly competitive product that thousands and thousands and thousands of people sell or stock or whatever, and you just think you're going to cruise it by using the same content across all those products, then you've got a problem coming. So it, it, it all depends on what you're trying to achieve. You know, yeah, they'll appear, but it all depends on what it is. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm slightly puzzled by the fact that you know, if something has three names, it's the same, but it, uh, the content's going to be exactly the same. I mean, it just doesn't make sense to me. Um, it sounds as if that... Um, you know, by giving different names to the same thing, um, 
the posters are you know, the poster is wondering whether um, they can sort of crowd out the um, search results and I'm not 100% sure that would be the right way to proceed to me it sounds like you want to have a strong page rather than weak pages of the same okay well, let's call this a, um, a, a response and uh, move on to the next this one um, I don't know how to pronounce uh, I don't even know what character set that uh, that is um, well what is it Masataki uh, I think it's Hebrew <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, do I, uh, question seven on our run list, do I need to use Royal Canonical for a translated page? Um, he goes on to say, do I need to use Royal Canonical for a translated page or uh, will it have its own uh, page rank? I do not wish to translate my entire site as it's too big, but I uh, only want to translate my most popular pages. Well, Richard, answer the question. Um, no. Because yeah. if you have translated something, um, that is a page on its own. It's a content on its own. Um, again, Canonical sort of states what is the true location, or the, if you like, the true copy. Um, and if you have, let's say, one in English and another in Hebrew, they're two separate things. You know, and just think logically about it. Not everyone who speaks English can read Hebrew and vice versa. So, you know, they're two separate pages and they will have their own, if you like, page rank. Uh, because they're considered as two distinct, independent pages. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Taki. Okay, number eight on our run list um, is from Ahmed C. Um, he asked a question titled, I'm facing a dilemma with the content siloing approach. Um, he said that, um, I'm facing a dilemma with content siloing approach on a content heavy website. The content silo approach renders my website um, four to five sub-levels deep. Uh, here's how it will be. Uh, homepage leading to resources link hub, leading to topic one pillar, leading to topic one A slash B slash C slash X brackets supporting pages. Um, I've got a headache. Um, he said, I'm concerned about the click depth. As you can see, it's more than three levels. Um, will this uh, be uh, uh, much of a uh, bottleneck or should I follow a different approach? So this is the thing. You're assuming every single uh, person is going to be coming in via the homepage. Uh, so you're assuming that incorrectly uh, when they want to find a piece of content further within the site. Um, you know, typically, depending on what it is, you know, you, you think about your different topics as the silos in themselves. And when, you, when, when you're creating that and, you know, people will be coming in either to the exact page that they've, you know, been, been researching or searching on because it will appear as relevant. Um, and then they're coming into the site within within one of those middle kind of um, sections. Uh, so you know you you're looking at it as if someone's coming in from the home page. Uh, equally, you're also looking at it from a point of view where a search engine will start at the front and you know like three or four clicks. No, because you're also depending on how you set it up, you, you know you could have. Uh, different sitemaps, so search engines will will, will find these, um, and then of course 
you don't forget you're interlinking um, between different things within your, your you know your supporting pages and topics and and all of this so yeah you're kind of looking at it from a perspective if somebody starts at the home page well if somebody's always starting at your home page you've got a problem then because they're not finding you know or or search engines are not finding the rest of your content relevant to display to users for their particular search queries thank you tim all right let's um, go to the next um leave uh, question number eight and let's look at question number nine um, how does google determine the page language um he goes on to say inevitably i'm getting into the multiple languages uh, seo realm and I, I wanted to know if i only want to translate my most popular pages and give users an option uh, uh, to read in other languages um, will Google automatically direct them to their local language or native language? Which one will it be? Uh, is it based on location, um, the browser's language, um, the uh, operating system language? Uh, how does Google determine? Will it be automatically redirected if in use the uh, href lang tags? Um, should I use a canonical tag in order to uh, uh, connect the translated pages uh, to the original page? If I won't use an, an href lang tag or a canonical tag, will Google not know that these pages are connected? Will Google not redirect? What about pay, the page rank? Will each version have its own page rank in different scenarios or only if it is done without uh, both tags? Well, we've already established that you should be using hreflang and not canonicals. Okay, so so that's the, the first thing. Um, as to what Google, uh, all the different scenarios you gave, you know, if somebody's searching in Hebrew, then they are going to try and return Hebrew pages to you. You know, it, it's if someone's searching Chinese language, they will try and return Chinese. If someone's searching in Dutch, they will try and return Dutch. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's simple as that, you know, and even they will try and return it, even if you don't use hreflang to denote that, you know, your hreflang is basically telling which is the translated version and in which language is it. That's just for a better understanding of your site. Um, they don't necessarily use that to display that page. You know, they will realize that this page is written in this language. And if it's relevant, they will, you know, display it. One thing I will, I will just mention to you that you may not sort of have thought about, or you may be, you, you, you are also assuming that your popular page in English is going to be popular in the translated version. It's not. Okay. Um, because different countries, different people search different things, they read different content, they have a different mindset. Um, and I've got a client, um, a hotel, in fact, that has, even though I said, look, you know, I think you're pissing into the wind here translating your most popular things, they went ahead and did it. And it's, it's, you know what I mean? It's it's the same thing. Look, yes, they are getting traffic, but on a comparison into what the original language is, based upon you know what people were searching around different things, they don't search the same things. They don't think about the same things. Some of the more generic ones still actually do all right. But when you get down to the nitty gritty of it, you know people have a different sort of, uh, uh, and there's different cultures, there's different cultural aspects to it. So one of them is not necessarily going to be interested in reading about uh, organic food or, you, you know, different things or the, the, the ecosystem of a particular area, the bay, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's so, you know what I mean? It's, you, I'm just going to, 
you know, throw in a little bit of caution there, Dad. Like, it, it also depends on what your, you know, your page is. But, um, um, you know, and what the content is. But I'm just going to, you know, just be forewarned that just because something is popular, you know, is a, is a popular page in English, it um, is not necessarily going to be popular in a translated language to that um, country. Yeah, I think in a sense that the whole set of questions are not sort of the, mm, what would be the right word, not the um, useful questions to ask because as Tim and then Richard in the community responded, it really depends on what the people are looking for and in what language. So as Tim said, if someone's look, you know, is typing a query in English, then Google isn't suddenly going to return Hebrew results for that query and vice versa. Um, obviously, if you have, if you're located um, in a certain country and then you have set up your uh, Google profile as such so that your default language is perhaps different from the locale, all of that you know, can change things. But if you enter a query in English, then most of the results will be in English. And if you say um, type in a query in Hebrew, then most of the results will be in Hebrew. So in a sense, many of the questions asked are sort of overthinking this point. You know, you're just thinking too much about it. So, um, you know, let's say you type in a query in English. Um, Google isn't suddenly going to transfer people into a different language. Um, Yeah. Okay. Um, will, we, will we move on to the next? Okay, I'll, I'll record that as a yes. Um, let's um, have a look. Um, this one from Gulam Abbas. Um, any idea on how to increase the domain rating? Um, hello, everyone. He said, I hope you guys are doing well. He said, I have this site. It's called uh, intozoom.com. Whatever I do, I cannot increase the domain rating. Uh, does anyone have any idea on how to increase the domain rating? So I hate to burst your bubble here, mate, but, you know, this domain rating is thought up by a tool that thought up by normal people that have no idea on how Google looks at anything. So why are you even, like, concerned with it? Because it's got nothing to do with any of the search engines. So, like, yeah, I mean, no. Forget about it. Just create stuff, you know, that's, you know, uh, yeah. Okay. All right, let's, um, is there anybody else? Okay, let's move on to the next. Um, number 11 on our run list from Jack and Mathis. Um, how many countries can we target is the title. Um, Jack and said, uh, in Google Search Console for, for a single website, how many countries can we target? Only one or more than one? Uh, two, I am from India and I'm looking for uh, a domain extension. So um, may I go with .in or .com? Um, if, if, if I have a .in extension, I have good chances to rank well uh, in google.co.in. 
I am. Look, the ideal thing is if if your product or anything like that, it would just make sense for you to use dot in. If you if if you're if you're um, you know you you want people globally to to view your you know your pages or whatever dot com would probably make a lot more sense um but it's it's not necessarily how many t countries can you target you just because your stuff may not be relevant to other countries um it, you know the the the, the the search may be completely different. There may be a different language. It may be, you know, so look, if your product, well, I don't know what you do, but if your product is only available in India, then, you know, it would make sense for you to have it on a dot in. Um, if you want to just target, you know, if you want your product or your, your content to be viewed, on a wider basis, it's all in English. So let's just say English language, then um, I would probably put it on a .com. But then again, the question is, can you only supply or deliver or whatever it is to India? Then I would, then again. So you need to just look at what you're trying to achieve um, and like what the business actually does or the site actually does. Um, but you know you also need to remember that it's not necessarily even if you're on a dot in um and more people are querying that specific sort of product page information or whatever and they are english speaking people in uh, it could be anywhere in in flipping south africa then all of a sudden and and that's most relevant then Google will display that regardless of the domain uh, to those users who are particularly searching it. So ultimately, it doesn't really matter in that sense. It's not going to hinder you from appearing in another place. Uh, but just think about your consumer and, you know, where they are actually located and what you can actually deliver. And then that will be your decision don't don't think about the actual countries itself but if you're like okay it's going to be english language globally then i would say dot com but yeah thank you tim anybody else all right let's move on to the next it's number 12 on our run list it's from a question from milay zivkovic um, and uh, it's titled, can I ask for a recall of a page um, that is not on my own website? Um, Millay said, hey all, uh, yeah, can I ask for a recall of a page that's not on my own website? Uh, no, because you don't have access to the Search Console. Um, um i'm guessing if you wanted to i don't know get google to find that page quickly chuck a link on a newly published thing on your own site and then have google crawl yours which will then go to theirs which will crawl theirs i don't know why you'd want to do it but i'm guessing that's the only that's like one way of signaling the uh, a crawler to get to that page, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Number 13, unlucky for some. Um, to quest, will? No, that can't be right, surely. Yeah, I, well, it must be Tim. Uh, maybe I, I uh, how did, I, how did I do that wrong? Let me just have a quick look. Uh, well, somehow or other, I've managed to convince myself uh, that I uh, have 13 uh, questions. And when we only have 
sorry, much more than 13, but we, we only have um, 12. Anyway, um, so it's that time again. We, we've um, answered all of the questions asked on the uh, SEO, uh, dumb SEO questions community on Facebook. Before I go, I must thank um, Rob Mars, uh, uh, Masataki Wasa, Tim Kappa uh, for uh, um, uh, turning up like clockwork so many times and uh, um, yeah, uh, uh, getting getting the job done. Um, we'll be back um, next week for episode four hundred. Um, uh, as as Rob said, it's not a bad effort, is it, Tim? No. No, not bad at all, mate. Congratulations, well done. Um, all right, um, let's um, let's um, close up. Um, I'll just make sure. Um, whose birthday, Rob? Is it? Oh, da David Roseanne. So it, so it was. Yes, I, I, yeah, I should know. And so should you, Tim. But you, you, you wished him happy birthday too. Um. Anyway, um. Also, may I point out people um, who contributed uh, through the week. Um, people like Michael Martinez. Um. Without whose help, um, we would be. Uh, a lesser enterprise or a less useful uh, service. Anyway, um, let me stop this recording.